Yeah, can, can I get a, a three wise with uh, onions and uh, 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 give me some extra ketchup? You want onions or something? Yeah, you know, extra onions. Okay, I want onions or something. Yeah, the three wise. Yeah, it's alright. Welcome to Three Wise Radio, a podcast where we talk about movies, video games, comic books, TV, technology, the internet, and everything else media related. My name is Joe Greller. As usual, I'm joined by Garrett Welker and Sam Pixley. How's everyone doing this week? Uh, doing pretty good, Joe. Doing, doing pretty good. Surviving. Staying alive. Exactly. Ha, well. ha, ha, ha. Is it ha, ha, or ah, ah? Ah. I think it's ah, I think ah. it's ah. Yeah, I don't think... It's not like the Joker's ha, singing ha, it. Ha, ha, ha. I think it's ah. Okay, we'll go with that then. Bee Gees. <laughs> uh, speaking of that, our good friend Joe Capstick is actually in a performance. By the Bee Gees. was in a musical, Staying Alive, or he's going to be in a musical like Staying Alive? I think it's called like Saturday Night Live. Saturday Night Fever. Yeah. Which Staying Alive is the famous song from mm-hmm. Saturday Night Fever. And apparently it's all Bee Gees music. Interesting. Yeah. Do, what else do they got? The Bee Gees? Yeah. I, I don't know. I'm sure okay. they got something if you're like a disco fan, you know, but... All seven of them. And then, fun trivia, the sequel to Saturday Night Fever, and there is a sequel to Saturday Night Fever, is called Staying Alive. Yep. How about that? Directed by... Jason Statham. <laughs> Close. Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> that was actually much closer <laughs> than I thought it was going to be. All right. <laughs> Man's a triple threat. <laughs> he is... Speaking of directors, let's get into some headlines, starting with my favorite person in the world, I say sarcastically, just because this headline caught my attention. James Cameron. James Cameron, quick at work on Avatar 5. What? Yes, that, that was the headline. Avatar director James Cameron has provided an unnecessary and no one asked status update on his four sequel films, confirming they're all being developed simultaneously and motion capture is set to start in August. Again. I think this is going to be a situation where James Cameron was inspired by the Saw series, but he's going to do it in the real in real world. It's like, okay, actually, we're shooting number four the same time we're shooting number two, but number five releases first, and number three will wrap the whole thing up. Well, to answer that, when the Daily Beast <laughs> asked how Avatar 2 was coming along, Cameron replied, my focus isn't on Avatar 2. My focus is on Avatar 2, 3, 4, and 5 equally. That's exactly how I'm approaching it. They've all been developed equally. Oh my god. That's please please get more pretentious. <laughs> <laughs> god. I want to see so these interviews, this is something that I want to see for him. I want to see see him in the interview. I want to watch a video of him being interviewed because I want to see the way that he says this and like the mannerisms that he uses cuz maybe this dude's just super into Avatar. <laughs> he might be, but apparently he doesn't enjoy writing them because he, <laughs> honest to God, I don't want to make a story. I just want things to happen. <laughs> George Lucas. Uh, honest to God. Um, he says, I feel like I've wait. I feel like I've been let out of jail because I've been in a writing cave for the last two years. I don't enjoy writing. I wouldn't wish writing on a dog. Direct quote from him. I, I also wouldn't. Re- yeah, I wouldn't. <laughs> it'd be a terrible movie. <laughs> bork, bork, woof, woof. Pupper. Well, who wrote because, Purpose of a Dog? I feel like a dog might have written oh, a dog's, that. Pur- dog's, a purpose. dog's Purpose, yeah. It's that joke, that office joke with Michael Scott where he's like, I wish a baby were president. Actually, no, don't make a baby president. That's a horrible <laughs> idea. It's, it's better as a joke. <laughs> that also applies to a dog writer. Yeah. Oh, that it does. Now let's get to some actual news. One of two breaking stories that happened today, the BBC and Peter Capaldi have confirmed that he is leaving Doctor Who at the end of this season. So this new series coming out will be his last, and as usual, the Doctor will regenerate. Or Will he, though? In the Christmas episode of 2017. Will he, though? So... What does that mean? You, you're the one who's probably... Well, so, you know some Doctor I Who, too, Doctor don't you? Who. Yeah. Okay. So, up until the end of Matt Smith's run, mm-hmm. it was believed that the Doctor had already gone through... Because Time Lords are only allowed, like, 12 or 13. Is it 12 or 13? You remember? I think it's 12. They're only allowed 12 regenerations. After that, okay. they die. Do you remember when we had an 
like a very, very off air conversation. And I use that because we were actually like shooting Facebook messages back and forth about Doctor Who. Nope. Can't get more off air. A couple than weeks that. ago. Like, like a oh, few weeks ago. We were talking was, about like the times and stuff? Yes. Yeah. So I looked up some of that. And apparently that is only stated in one episode prior to the reboot. That exact phrase. And they're like, we're shocked at how that came on. And then apparently when. Oh, okay. So who are they in order? It's. Oh, I don't know. No, no, no. Any, no. I mean, oh, just, oh, just the new people? The, the most recent. Uh, Eccleston, and then it's Tennant, Tennant, and then it's Smith. Okay, Capaldi, so during Smith's run, the same question is asked again, and he says, I, it's like an unlimited, like, he... he they sh- mention it there. He's like, I'm on my last life. I'm on my last leg. And then, like, suddenly, like, he absorbs some sort of time-space energy, and he regenerates again into Capaldi. And it's like, oh, well, shit. I didn't know that was in me. Because I think they said something like, how many times can you regenerate or something? He gives something of, like, really big number of, like, that they'll never get to. <laughs> well, now it's, yeah, because there was the episode, oh, I'm totally blanking on what it was. But, yeah, it was like, as he was dying, he set something up that he didn't think could actually be set up. I mean, it's all very Hoovian for it to happen. <laughs> but it essentially, uh, it's, it's like with uh, Dragon Ball Z, when eventually Goku's just like, oh, I might be just be a Saiyan god. It's like, he just might be the god of... The Time Lords, or the whatever. Time Lords, <laughs> and you're just go like, oh, okay. Keep keep mixing it up. I foresee Doctor Who taking a dip here pretty soon, though. Really, it's their chain. I maybe maybe not. I guess technically not. Looking at how many seasons everybody's been on it, but I feel like they're starting to rapidly go through um, and having not so well known and just popular. Um, what are they called? I'm totally blanking. Not companions. just doctors, but companions are going through pretty quickly. Those are kind of rapid firing. Um, I don't know. It is everybody that I know that watches the show has kind of lost a little bit of interest. And maybe that's not a bad thing. Let's not forget that this is the second incarnation of Doctor Who, and it's going into its 10th season since the reboot. And it was gone for almost 20 years Yeah. Oh, in between time. So maybe some time off again might not be a bad thing. Close it out and then let someone come back again. And we can watch it again when we're middle-aged. Yeah, you know, I mean... I remember. Yeah. Nostalgia (laughs) tends to have an everlasting effect, as we're going to find out later in this episode. Yep. So, speaking of Doctor Who, the war doctor in Doctor Who, John Hurt, passed away at 77. Now, there's many different things you might know John Hurt from. Harry Potter. He's in Harry Potter. Did you mention Harry Potter? I, I did not, no. He's in Harry Potter. I... I was going to go along with Alien, where he is the guy who actually gets his chest cavity blown out. Great scene. I, however, like to best remember John Hurt as the crazy old guy in the worst Indiana Jones film ever. Oh, yeah. Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. I also like to think of him, I think he's also the crazy old guy in Clash of the Titans. He is. Not the good one. Mm-hmm. He's and, the crazy and, old guy a lot as he and got he's, older. He's the, he's the villainous king and... Uh... In or not king, but like he's he's the he's the king in the the rocks Hercules too. Guy's a crazy old guy. He is. Mm-hmm. He's also the uh, horned king in Disney's The Black Cauldron. Whoa! V for Vendetta. Damn. He's also, also a bad guy in V for Vendetta. Yes, this guy's a dick. <laughs> and <laughs> really good. Snowpiercer. And no, he's a good guy in Snowpiercer. One of his one of his uh, less famous roles, though, playing the exact same or parodying the exact same character from Alien. He does appear in. Space balls as well. Nice. Oh yeah, nice. He is also in uh, Harry Potter, though. Just so you know, uh, if you He's the star. feel need to pay respect to John Hurt by running to a theater, he is apparently also currently in Jackie, co-starring along Natalie Portman. Um, I've not heard anything about that movie. Didn't know what that was. Uh, it's thing. Jackie Kennedy. She plays Jackie Kennedy, and uh, it, it was an Oscar. Trying to actually, I think she got nominated, didn't she? Or no? Uh, I don't know. I don't follow that stuff anymore. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Moving on, other breaking news today. Ben Affleck is apparently not going to direct Batman anymore after he told Jimmy Kimmel he's working on it, ever so famously. However, this according to Variety just a few hours ago from when we have been recording this cast, he is stepping down as director of the Batman, will remain on as producer and star of the project. Concerns... And so, okay, so there's basically... So you two, have concerns? Or you're yeah, yeah, yeah. So no, there's two schools of thought that, I, that I've kind of looked at this. Best, 
Worst case scenario, he's burnt he's burnt out on the questions and live by night affected him and he's just stepping down from this so that it doesn't take such a huge part of his life. Good I'm totally blanking on what I'm saying. The the good side that this could be is that he wasn't lying when he's like the idea of being able to play this character and be in this costume and then direct and run the ship is not feasible. It's it's that something like that has never been done before. Right. And and he's being honest when he says that okay, basically if you're going to drop one or the other, you can't drop the guy in front of the camera. It's always right. the guy behind the camera is replaceable. So what he was saying is that he's looking for it the way that he phrased it and I think it's a very specific choice of words for like for this director I'm looking for a partner. Right. And I and I saw I read somewhere that the on the short list is Matt Reeves, yes, who which will, will be dumb. The new Planet What's of the Apes done? movie. Oh, Planet of the Apes. Uh, let yeah. the right one in, or let mm-hmm. me in. The American version. Um, he also did Cloverfield. Okay. Okay. So I mean, the dude's got talent. He does, and if Planet of the Apes does well, he may be Warner Brothers' new golden boy, because some are also saying it might be because Warner Brothers doesn't want to trust Ben Affleck with this, because final totals are in, and also according to Variety. Live by Night is officially a $75 million loss towards Warner Brothers. And that's not counting in marketing costs. Yeesh. Uh, bigger, bigger bombs have happened. And he's pretty sure Ben Affleck has still netted them more money than lost. It's a possibility. It I is mean, fairly I mean, confident. I, mean, I, mean, look at, I think he did it in that last movie he was in, Batman vs. Superman. So That was a flop, though. I know it was a flop, but in a way, it wasn't. A financial way. Um, I don't think that's what it is. Although it does, I am still very concerned. Like we were talking about with this being a director, director focused universe. So yeah. who knows? Right. I just want some good news. Well, with Live by Night, they've just pulled it all out of theaters since there are no Oscar nominations attached to it. But one DC property and one comic, and the only comic book property for the most part to get an Oscar nomination was in fact. Squad. Suicide Squad. For hair and makeup. Really? Yes. I would have given it to... Well, makeup. I mean, Harley Quinn looked great. Croc was awesome. Who else was nominated? I don't know. For hair and makeup? Yeah. I would have to look that up real quick. Ah, but, that's a lot of work. No but then you mostly see mm. these. I think Batman Forever won for sound mixing or something like that. Like There, there is superhero films that have gone through that have won back uh, like the behind the scenes awards. Mm-hmm. The only most notable comic book movie, though, to win a major award was Heath Ledger, postpartumly, as as the My Joker. Crazy. He is. As the Joker in The Dark Knight. Now, I have two questions with this. We didn't see any Civil War nominations. Yeah. <laughs> My dog is dying. <laughs> He's not. We, d- we didn't see any Civil War nominations. And if you remember, when Civil War was being made and when it came out, you had all the actors saying... Oh my God! This is this is this going to be. This is going to be a big thing. It's going to be. Oh my God! Nominated. This is the one that's going to be nominated for an Oscar. This is the one that's going to do it. And we're hearing that again with I think it's Infinity War or was it just we heard it recently again with with another upcoming comic book was it Wonder Woman? It was another upcoming comic book project that people were talking about like this. I could see Wonder Woman. Probably not DC. It'll probably be like Black Panther or something. It might, okay, might have been Black Panther. But here's my thing: Is it finally time to quit this line of conversation? when talking about comic book movies until it's proven that a comic book movie can actually be nominated until it's proven <laughs> that a comic movie can actually be nominated for a, an Academy Award. Is it time to quit just this unnecessary hype of, Oh, this is the one that's going to do it. Oh my God. Well, they were talking about this. Deadpool being nominated too, and it got snubbed. And then Ryan Reynolds tweeted about how the Deadpool's theme tickle fight is still happening at his place. Same usual time. <laughs> It's just I'm a little bit annoyed with it at this point because we're I know we're gonna hear it again and again and again and I am maybe in the minority here is gonna sound very insensitive I'm a firm believer that not only does Ledger not win for the Joker if he doesn't die he's not even nominated firm believer in that I think he'd be nominated but I don't know. I feel like he would have gotten a nomination, but... I think it's it. also not that big of a push. Is Yeah, there's the talk about, oh, this is going to get an Oscar nom, but I think that's just also people trying to legitimize 
comic book movies, which even when Civil War came out, which I know was still like earlier in 2016, that was still a push. There was still a big push for that happening. But now I think with Civil War happening, with Deadpool happening, it's it's kind of evolved into something else. And hopefully Logan does that too. Um, okay. Oh, Logan it will get Logan it. was Logan we heard. Logan it. will get it. It was Logan. We that was the one I Logan heard about it. Gonna, no, it, no way. Logan was the one that I heard that they were trying to make that avenue for. Well, there's only three nominees, so there's a chance the Suicide Squad could win. It has to beat Star Trek Beyond and a man called Ove. Why do I feel like it's going to go to a man called Ove? Because no one knows what that is. <laughs> it's probably a guy wearing old man makeup because those always get a nod. Somebody wearing old person makeup. Always gets a nod. Hmm. Very possibly. Hmm. All right, coming up, January is usually a dumping ground for movies. But now this year, we actually have seen franchises start to use January as their dumping ground to, well, just milk a little bit more money before it's all gone. However, before we get to that, I'm going to try and milk a little bit more money out of my Superman franchise. How much money have you made so far? Uh, zero. Perfect. So, But it's on a $0 budget, so anything's a profit. No, he's not wrong. Up in the sky, look! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! Oops. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll just start from Previously, <laughs> Previously on Joe's Superman saga, I don't remember who was playing Jor-El. We didn't cast him. We didn't cast him. <laughs> We spent an hour on Krypton, Jor-El trying to figure out what was going on with Krypton and the green gas, with his assistant, Brainiac, played by Kevin James, yes. decided that it's bad. Gas yes. is bad. <laughs> In order to spare his one son, he gets some other Kryptonians to build a ship, unbeknownst to them, to travel to get his son away from the planet. Planet goes boom, he makes it out, we all know how Superman goes. Superman, Clark Kent, found by Mon Pa Kent, played by Sean Connery and Dame Judi Dench. Yes. Is he Sir Sean Connery? Yes. Sir Sean Connery and Dame Judi Dench find the boy and raise him to be the Clark Kent we know today. Fast forward, Clark Kent maybe works for the Daily Planet, I don't remember. Not yet. Not yet? Not yet. Not yet. But... Let's see what else is going on. He does by on. the end of the movie, though. He does by the end of the movie. Okay, perfect. Lex Luthor, played by Jeremy Piven, mm -hmm. is doing some bad stuff. But no one quite knows that it's him that's responsible for it, uh, such as getting Parasite, played by Elijah Wood, and Toymaker, played by Idris Elba, to do some bad things. Correct-ish? Correct-ish. Ish. Correct-ish. There we go. And Superman puts the stop to it without a Superman attire, just in his day-to-day -day garb. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have that classic scene where he's floating slightly above Lex Luthor, and he's like, I'm keeping my eye on you because this is strange, and I don't buy what you sell. And that's how that movie happened. You're 55% right. You're 55% right. Well, this right. is how we're going to do it every time. No, nope, I like it. <laughs> I like it. The, the couple things I would say is, don't forget Zod. Left. It's not about the person that makes the movie, Joe. It's about the viewer and what the viewer interprets it as. You're right. And if you want to have your own interpretation, you just go back to number 62 and give it a listen. So, all right. This one is called Man of Steel, and it picks up six months after the events of the first film. Clark is just settling into his day-to-day -day life at the Daily Planet, and he's getting ready to head out to an event. Is he a stringer at this point? Wow, well, you're gonna have to. Move. I don't know what a stringer is. They just <laughs> call them because they just call them that in the papers. Okay, the sure. don't they? Hey, there's our new stringer, Clark Kent, on the scene. I think they're like low-level guys, <laughs> right? I don't know. Probably. You guys know what I'm talking about. I mean, yes, though, he right? writes. He writes articles and like. I don't know. If stringers write articles. I just know they're called stringers. <laughs> Continue. I'll find out for Thank us. You. Garrett, yeah, get on that. <laughs> okay. Be our stringer. Maybe. <laughs> Hopefully, some of you're using that right in some form or fashion. Anyway. So, he's getting ready for an event just about when there's a knock at the door and it's Lois. <gasps> Side note, Stringer, a newspaper correspondent not on the regular staff of a newspaper, especially one retained on a part-time basis to report on events in a particular place. So he's not a Stringer because he's no, an he would be then. He would be a Stringer then, you're right. He's not hired by the Daily Planet? He is? Well, okay. Um, is he a he's staff a, Is member? he like a freelance? Freelance, basically. Okay. Oh, okay. Then so he's a Stringer. A stringer, yeah. stringer yes. Clark Kent. So, congratulations, you were right. Yes! 
Uh, well, he is assigned by Perry. Lois and Clark are assigned by Perry, basically, to cover the brand new Lexo skeleton suit that's being unveiled. Lexo Lexo skeleton <laughs> suit. You were so happy when you came up with that. I didn't. It's the, oh, this, uh, these events are loosely based off Man of Steel number four, I believe. Perfect. So it's either three or four. So go we go through uh, a super speed version of Clark Kent getting ready, which is exactly from the comic, and it's got a famous little panel, which I would love to recreate the scene where he shaves using a piece of his ship reflecting his heat vision to shave. Classic. So, And plus you need something to happen while we show the opening credits for, for the movie. He's a guy just like you and me. Exactly. That's the point I'm With trying to get. eyes. <laughs> All right, so another thing to know is that there's still a little tension between Lois and Clark yeah, because Clark scooped her on getting the Superman story, which kind of been mostly what Clark does is he gets he writes the Superman pieces. He's freelance for the Daily Planet. He writes the Superman pieces, but Perry is using him once in a while to see if maybe he would fit to test out different things. Sure. So at the event, Clark becomes aware of a natural disaster happening off the coast of Japan and has to leave. Damn. As Clark leaves, moments later... Inner Gang attacks the boat. Inner Gang is led by gangster Michael Madsen. Michael Madsen, who is playing <laughs> Bruno Mayhem. Okay. All right. I think mean, that's pretty good casting. And they are attempting to steal the suit. They are stopped by Lex's head of security. I need a female friend of me. Female friend of me. Oh, let me find this. I'm going to have to cut this part out. I don't have a friend of me. Uh, what, is it one woman? Yes. Uh, Thandy Newton. Thandy Newton is Marcy Graves. A uh, Mercy Graves. I'm sorry, Mercy Graves. Okay. Not Lucy Liu. No. And her top former and her top soldier, a former military man. I actually like Thandy Newton as Mercy Graves. I think that would work. Yeah. I'm on board. And uh, her top soldier, former military man, the villain of this movie. This is just one male. Yes. Matt Damon. <laughs> Matt Damon, who plays John Corbin. Yeah. So. He's been in an exosuit before. <laughs> he has. That one movie. But he's not wearing the exosuit. He's Damn. protecting the exosuit. Damn. <laughs> so they foil Inner Gang and Bruno Mayhem's attempt to steal the suit. Superman returns, and Lex is like, well, you're a little bit too late. But that's okay. We know Superman's trying his best out there. He can't be everywhere at once. So he's not publicly discrediting him. He's using this argument to be like, we need more people in the world like Superman. There needs to be more things out there like Superman. Well, over the next few weeks, Inner Gang keeps hitting LexCorp facilities all across the United States. Dang. What? He just keeps hitting them. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we come to find out that Lex does know about these attacks every time they're happening, but does not particularly care. Because as these are going on, he is setting up accidents on the other end of the country or, and the world at the same exact time. Now, he's doing these for two reasons. One, to test the limits of Superman's abilities to see if he can actually be at two places at once. He can't. How fast is his speed? How strong is his speed? And this is loosely taken off a great episode of Lois and Clark, where Lex does test Superman's abilities. And he's also using these to prove, though, that there needs to be another super beam that is just to protect Metropolis. Yes, Metropolis relies too much on Superman, but he can't always be there. He's out there clearly doing all these other things. So... As this is going on, Clark's realizing, though, that he, in Clark's mind, he should be able to get back to stop whatever's happening. Sure. He thinks that, I've saved this, I do this, like, I can do it. I, I'm not quite understanding what's happening and why I'm not able to go back and forth. Okay? Mm. As the movie progresses, we then meet two scientists in the front of me camp. This is a shout out from an old movie, older movie. Seth Green and Jack Black. Enemy of the state. Enemy of the state. So <laughs> Seth Green is Dr. Happenson, who basically is, in the comics, creates all of Lex's creatures, uh, his clones, Bizarro, all these things. Okay. So that's Dr. Happenson. Jack Black is Dr. Hank Henshaw, <laughs> who is also one of Lex's scientists. Those who know who Hank Henshaw becomes gets the joke. So Whitewashing. <laughs> Bastard. Lex rolls out a new prototype suit that these two have created called Project Metallo. Mm -hmm. And basically, they need someone to test this out. So they take their top soldier, their top man, John Corbin, to test out this Metallo upgrade. They're basically like, we're going to give you this, a serum. It's the Super Soldier Serum. 
kind of poking fun at the opposition here. The super soldier serum that's going to make you just as good as Superman. So, Lex and Corbin go out and they hunt down Intergang together, saying that this is the guy, this is the hero that Metropolis needs, deserves, and everything else. And they prove that Morgan Edge, played by, once again, Morgan Edge is played by Mark Wahlberg. Great, yes. Morgan Edge, played by Mark Wahlberg, is backing Bruno Mannheim and Intergang. Which is true, but Lex is letting all this happen. Nothing is happening in Metropolis without Lex, not without Lex's know-how. So, Edge and Mannheim go to jail, and the papers love Corbin, calling him the Man of Steel. Because mm-hmm. bullets bounce off him, he can bend steel with his bare hands, and he is the hero that... Metropolis deserves and needs and everything else. Hey, and he's, a, he's a hometown man. He's, he's a hometown there. man. And furthermore, does Superman, <clears throat> as maybe an American citizen, as maybe an alien to this planet politically and morally, does he have a right to interfere in other countries or even our own country when there's a problem that arises? Now, these are a series of articles that is being written by friend, handsome black man. That would be Jesse Williams. Jesse, I have no cabin problem. in the woods. And he's on Grey's Anatomy. He's the black guy in Cabin in the Woods. Oh, okay. Okay. He is playing Ron Troop. So he's a famous person in the comics who's basically a truth seeker and everything else. And he's writing all these with Perry's blessing. Perry loves it because you have Clark Kent writing these pro-Superman pieces. You have Ron writing these anti-Superman pieces and praising this new guy. And Perry, played by George Clooney, which I still love my my casting of that is basically letting all this happen and thinks it's great. So while out on a mission, rounding up one of the inner gang's last members, John Corbin is wounded by a genetic monster called rampage. This is not, this is, this could be a female bodybuilder. We were not literally casting her. Just whatever, just whatever. But rampage is a character in the comics and we're going to use her similar to dark Knight trilogy. You Victor's ass, just a good villain that you can stick in a small time role. Okay. So, He's tragically wounded in that, and he goes back to LexCorp to be like, I-, I need help here. Something's not right. Like, my arm's not working now. I, w- what's going on? And Lex is like, we'll fix you. We'll fix you. We'll fix you. Now, for this exosuit, mm-hmm. is he... Well, he's not, no, there's no exosuit. Exosuit oh, just was just... Serum. That's right. Yes. That's right. Okay. You said, you said earlier that the, yeah, it was the exosuit called Project Metallo. No, the exosuit was just a uh, thing we'll that see, they were unveiling we'll at the beginning. Okay. Let's see how this plays out. All right. So... He's like, no, you're going to be okay. We'll, we'll take a look at it. We'll fix it and everything else. Well, they don't put him out, and he's wondering what's going on. And they basically just take his arm clean off. And he sees that, and he's finding out for the first time as they're fixing him that he is a machine. And this happens in the animated series where now he's, you know, his skin starting to rip off and everything else, and he's seeing that he is machine underneath. He is no longer, in his mind, human. And this is starting to kind of be like what what's going on here why am i what, going to drive him a little why me bro insane. yeah he's going a little bit a little bit insane so he basically reveals to him that he's a cyborg and he's powered by this green rock which acts as his energy source it's this renewable energy source it's great radiation can power a nuclear power plant if need to but it doesn't it doesn't affect humans and corbin kind of gives him blowback and he's like well are you in on this with everyone? Like, what's going on? Is the, you know, the media is loving me. You control everything else. I'm seeing how you're manipulating Bruno Mannheim, Morgan Edge. Are you manipulating the media as well? And Lex, Lex is just being coy Lex, being like, that's none of your concern, nothing else. So he decides he's going to figure it out for himself. Because what am I? Am I human? Am I not? I'm going to go get answers. And he goes and kidnaps the man who's been writing all these articles about him, these great pro Man of Steel articles about him, Ron. And of course, just because... It's a Superman movie, and she always happens to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. Lois as well. So the two Have are kidding. Have we cast Lois yet? She's Erica Durrance, remember? I said I got to cast oh, Superman. Oh, you cast her, correct. Okay. Lois, correct. Perry, and... Um, Jimmy. Who's Jimmy. Yeah, it was Jimmy. Jimmy, yes. Jimmy's just around. That's right. Jimmy's just around. Has yet to actually play a big part, but he is in these movies. Don't you worry. So... Everything... So he's kidnapped him, and he takes him to, these, to this abandoned... Missile silos, which was Corbin's first like spot that he he knows him because it was the first place he was at in the military. He knows how to guard him, everything else. Goes on a rampage and broadcasts to the entire United States. I'm gonna start setting these off if I don't get some answers because 
Lex Luthor did this to me and I want, you know, this is a conspiracy here and we want, I want to figure out who this is and what, you know, what's going on and, and everything behind it. So of course, Superman sees this or Clark sees this, goes to Superman and he wants, and he's like, this crazy guy who you were backing is saying you're in charge of all this. You clearly know something. And Lex taunts him saying that, well, that, that you can't prove anything. Is it Clark goes to him or no? Superman? He goes. Superman goes to him. Superman goes to him. Superman goes to him, and Lex taunts him, saying, "You you can't you can't prove anything." And he used the fact of you're you're irrelevant, and I've proven that. I've created a replacement for you once. I can do it again. And yeah, they they kind of love you now, the people, but there's no they're not always going to love you. And as you can see, and he uses Ron's articles as an example, like, look at this man. This man's already turned against you and everything else, like the people will turn on you. Sure. So Superman goes to the missile silo and tries to basically technically in Superman form, solve everything with his fists, comes in guns ablaze and beats down the door, fights Corbin, gets his ass handed to him. Corbin destroys a Superman. And Clark's like, I don't understand what's going on here again, but the further I get away from him, the easier time I have. So my job is now to get Ron and Lois out of this missile silo, protect them and everything else. Mm-hmm. As he does that, Corbin sets off the first two missiles. Superman takes those missiles, throws them into space, and throws them in opposite directions of space. He then goes and smashes the computer. And is like, okay, we're not playing this game. Like I clearly can't beat you hand-to-hand, but you're not setting off these missiles. You're not going to destroy the Earth. You're not going to do anything like this. You want to do something, that's fine. So he says, fine, I'm just going to blow up this last one and destroy me and everything in this area with me. So Superman says, I, you know, figures something out. He's got to do something. So he starts digging into the earth and he basically cuts a giant hole around the silo that Corbin is in. Mm -hmm. And he lifts that silo up into space as well. Corbin the entire time. He is just chucking stuff into space. There's nothing up there. There's something. <laughs> chucking stuff into space. So Corbin ends up destroying himself in the silo. It's left open to your interpretation whether or not he survived. But that we, we basically say that it's unknown for those reasons. So we then come towards the end of the movie. And Ron and Lois have started a relationship based on what we've seen in the background throughout this movie. So Ron and Lois are going to a relationship. We see Lex working on other super bean projects at his desk. And there are titles like Parasite, Atomic Skull, and Bizarro. We see these folders laid out on his desk. Well, for the third time in two movies, Superman knocks on his window again and comes flying in. And is like, clearly, you were... You're the worst. Yeah, you're the worst. Clearly, you're behind this. But as he gets closer to him he starts to feel the same weakness that he's been feeling on these different missions when he was fighting Corbin and he drops to his knees and Lex is like, Oh yeah, this, that, um, well, that's a green rock. And there's been one of these at every little thing you've been doing. And this was in Corbin. And now it's on me. You're no longer going to be stopping by here anymore because if you do, I'm going to hurt you. And he hits him a few times to show that he's in power. He's got the ring. Yep. He's got, he's got the ring on his finger. He's got the Kryptonite ring on his finger. He's like, I'm in power now. You won't be, we won't be having these conversations anymore. You're done. And now it's, he is basically, in a sense, because he's so weak and feeling bad, he's kneeling in front of Lex, basically. So he has to fly off because he doesn't know what's going on. Superman leaves. So the movie ends with him heading back to Smallville, sitting down with Ma and Pa Kent, the great Connery and Connery and Dench. <laughs> Connery and Dench and saying he needs to learn more about whatever this rock is. He needs to learn more about his roots. Mm. Like he knows that he's that that he's powerful. He's traveled the world looking for answers, never really got him. But I he's I gotta do something. And that's how the movie ends. Now the after credit scene <gasps> is one of the missiles that he had chucked into space, hitting the Phantom Zone, which was supposed to be the original ending. I, see, I said don't chuck stuff into space. I know hitting the Phantom Zone, and a ship comes out of it and crashes on Earth. And who gets out of it? Jason Jason Statham. Statham. Jason Statham. And he's going to tell him about who he was and his people. And that is the end of this, and it is continued in our third movie, 
Last Son of Krypton. The vampire and lichen clans have been at war for centuries, turning our world into a battlefield. Are you with me? The Umbrella Corporation thought they'd contained the infection. Well, they were wrong. Raccoon City was just the beginning. Within weeks, the T-virus had consumed the United States. Within months, the world. The virus didn't just wipe out human life. Lakes and rivers dried up, forests became deserts, and whole continents were reduced to nothing more than barren wastelands. Slowly but surely, the Earth began to wither and die. There are no more patriots, just rebels and tyrants. So which are you? I'm Triple X. January is usually the dumping ground for all major motion picture companies. However, more and more we're seeing franchises being released in January. Meaning, is it really the dumping ground that we all think it is? Yes. Yes, it is. Because the three franchises we'll be talking about this week are the three franchises that had installments this January. The fifth Underworld, the third Triple X, and the sixth Resident Evil. Now, in some form or fashion, we here at Three Wise Radio have seen all of these movies. Yeah, some form or fashion, indeed. Some form or fashion, <laughs> and we're here to talk about them. Yep. Yeah. How do we want to try and break this down? Because basically, Sam, I believe you have a series of questions for us. Yes. I've had, for extenuating circumstances, I have had a busy schedule. And so I have been unable to see any of these three movies. That's so right. I was going to ask some questions to you guys to dictate I get to see one movie for the rest of my <laughs> life. <laughs> one franchise for the rest of your life? No, just, just for the sake of this, I only get to watch one of these and nothing else. Which one's it going to be? So I have some questions about these movies that I want your opinions on to dictate. Okay. Okay. What is the superior movie? So I don't need you guys to pick which one's the best. I just need honest answers okay. as to some of these questions. All right. All right? Okay. okay. Sounds good. So start off real basic. Give me a quick plot synopsis for the movies. Um, all right. Well, let's stipulate that Garrett and I both saw Underworld together. Boy, did you. I saw Resident Evil, and then Garrett saw Triple X. Yeah. So let's start with Underworld, and we'll do our best together to give a synopsis for this movie. Brief synopsis. All right. Um, Picking up after the events of the fourth one. One would hope. Kate Beckinsale does not know where her daughter is at. Forgot she had Intentionally. a daughter. That, that's what the entire fourth movie revolved around. I remember. But barely. They, they let you know because she gives a synopsis of the previous film. As she, uh-huh. as she did in the trailer as well. Not even not even in the previous film. Previous films. Uh, uh, yes, it's like a good fifteen minutes. Like on the last episode of did it all of the underworld. Did it start with the war between the Ligons and vampires? Yes, it has did. taken place for millennia. <laughs> it did. Yeah, it did. I, I mean, all every of them damn do. time. Every damn time. <laughs> Consistency <laughs> is important. Even the prequel one, which was the third installment, I think started like that. <laughs> the war between the Ligons and vampires has been not so long this time, but still pretty long. <laughs> Which she wasn't even in. Nope. Uh, Roma Mitra was. Yeah. She's nice. So she is in this war. She, she, no, no, no. Her and apparently num- the dude, the love interest from the Divergent movies, who was in the last one as well. The and Lost I, Franco brother. Yeah, the Lost Franco brother, who I forgot <laughs> about. Her and Kate Beckinsale are on the run from the Lycans and the vampires because, you know. She's still got a ban on her from the coven Mm. is what it was for killing Mary. however the vampires capture her (gasps) and take her and she's like well I guess I'm done and like no we want you to train a new version of whatever you were I think it was the death Death, merchants death dealers death dealers we want you to train a new generation of death dealers okay well it turns out that it is that the vampire hierarchy has a coup brewing in it and they frame her for killing all the new trainees. Why? <laughs> because not Ava Green, but other lady. Other lady who plays the only thing I can think of her in she is she, she's aim she's um Irene Adler in the Sherlock show. Nope. That's cool though. Some vampire lady. Yeah. yeah. And she wants power, so they frame her and her and the lost Franco brother go out on the run. Again. Again. 
and they end up somehow going up north, maybe because the lichens are after them as well. Where the ghost people are? Yes. Cool. Like the 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 kind of vampires or whatever. They're they're another vampire covenant. Oh, so they're vampires. Yes. Okay. And so then the rest of the movie takes place based on that. Well, yes. They basically they they train her a little bit more, and you come to find out that the lost Franco brother is actually the heir to the vampire throne. Fuck. And then the final showdown happens through that. Which vampire throne? The the the, the, the main the, vampire. the European the Western. European, the original, the people, yeah, that one, mm-hmm. yeah, the guy with the cool jacket. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, all right, cool, all right, interesting. What about? Let's go triple X. Who? That's all you, Garrett. Who? Okay. <laughs> so we take place. <sighs> Forty <laughs> years. <laughs> when did the first one come out? Good Christ, two thousand two, I think. Okay, so we're taking place. 15-ish years ago. 15-ish years. Um, And it starts off with uh, Samuel Jackson kind of trying to initiate a new recruit. And it it has, like, it's almost like a a Suicide Squad thing where it's, like, whenever it first introduces a character, it, like, kind of freeze frames and, like, it's like Samuel Jackson, like, stats. And then it shows this other guy who's, like, a new recruit for the Triple X program. And on the bottom it says... Thought he was signing up for the Avengers. <laughs> okay. Okay. Nice. Whatever. Um, he gets to he gets to the end of the pitch, and the guy's like, well, "I just I just played soccer really good. I didn't really think I was. I didn't want. I don't want to be a hero." Samuel Jackson's like, "Okay." Well, he starts to leave because they're at a Chinese restaurant, and they're like, "So he starts to leave," and uh, and then this guy tries to start robbing the restaurant. <gasps> the kid saves the day. By it's kicking like, something. Yeah, by kicking something. And Samuel Jackson's like, yeah, that's that's the kind of material I need for this program. As they're getting ready to like sign off deal, sign off and like be like, yeah, let's let's go let's go forward on this. A satellite, which rewind, the satellite has been slowly plummeting towards Earth, towards this okay. Chinese town, and explodes, presumably killing Samuel Jackson. <gasps> he's dead. But he's in more of the trailer. Is he? I don't know. <laughs> All right, so continue. Um, so that happens, and we have we we go to a scene then of a bunch of people breaking into this building, led by uh, Donnie Yen and mm-hmm. three other guys, and uh, they break in, and while this sorry they break into this meeting of a bunch of like NSA the the higher security people. They break in and kill all those people, except for like two people, and then escape with this program that was presumably the one that brought down the satellite and is able to hack into other satellites. Because apparently there's thousands of satellites just orbiting Earth. That's true. Yes, but... No, there was like an asteroid belt of, <laughs> okay. of, of satellites. That's not true. <laughs> I was like, that's not a thing, but okay. <laughs> um... And then so the aftermath of that, they're like, ah, oh, well, shit, how are, we, how are we supposed to be able to fight these guys? And they're they're like, so hardcore. They're so, they're so hardcore. They just brought us down. They, Donnie Yen jumped from a building 70 feet and just broke through, gla- broke through three layers of glass with his solid feet. What? Okay. Um, <laughs> it doesn't make sense at all either. Um, Wait. I'm sorry. Is, Triple X is just point break. Yep. So far, yeah. <laughs> I mean, Triple X was supposed to be Bond for the extreme sports crowd. That's why in the first one you see Tony Hawk and Matt, whatever the frick is, BMX guy. LeBlanc? Name. No. Um, you know what I'm talking about, though, Garrett. <laughs> Matt LeBlanc. No. <laughs> BMXer. No. But it had every like known like X Games person at the time. Yeah, in I just never put the two to two together. It's like, it's just point break. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. God damn, that's shitty. Yeah. All um, right. So they need to find some kind of elite so they, person. So they're like, "Oh, we need somebody who can combat this, the, these guys, and their their skills." It's like, well, there's only one person that we can do it, and they're like, "Do you know who it is?" No, but Gibbons did. Samuel J's character, and he's like, "No, but Gibbons did." Flash for, left flashes to a uh, somewhere in like a uh, um, Hispanic Hispanic uh, country, South American country, South American, and uh, Vin Diesel is just climbing up. An electricity tower. Mess. He's he's looking at his phone. It's like, um, Defcon one. 
on his phone. It's got a countdown on it. He's like messing with all the electricity stuff. And the, the guards at the tower are like, hey, you can't be up there. So he puts on some skis and jumps off the tower into the jungle. Or we get, we get a jungle ski scene for some reason. I don't think that's... It's extreme. It's so extreme. And uh, he gets to... He gets off the skis and he gets on a longboard. And we got a continuous continuation of this scene where pretty much all the longboard stuff that you saw in the trailer is this scene. Um, and then he gets he get he runs to this small village, installs the electric stuff that he stole from the tower, just in time for DEFCON one to go one second, and then boom, soccer games on. So. Yeah, I forgot he's a political activist, isn't he, or whatever, like environmental activist, or no? Or he was just st- stealing a soccer game. Yeah, he was just stealing a soccer okay. game. He was stealing. He stole a power cell so that the small little shanty town can have. Could watch the soccer game. Could watch soccer. Great. All right, give me the rest of this movie, but in like a minute. Ooh. Or just tell me the plot. What's the sorry, plot of sorry. this movie? You're right. I'm getting a little too detailed. It's a pretty intense beginning. <laughs> We've um, covered ten minutes of this movie. So he gets his team. The team goes to this, basically like. Villain town. I don't. I don't know what to call it. It's, Villain town. Continue. Yeah, Mos Eisley. Mos Eisley. <laughs> Modern day Mos Eisley. And they find out that Donnie Yen and his team are formal trip, former former Triple X mm. members. That's not even a fun reveal anymore. But Donnie. But Donnie Yen's character and like he his side of the team's like, no, we want to use this this program to bring down more satellites and like. Make, get stuff for our game. So they, they, that one gets broken, but they find out there's another program that does the same thing, like the one they had, which is a prototype, the one that, that, have, that they have can hack into all the thousands of satellites around Earth. So then it's an action sequence of them trying to race each other to get to this, to get to this program and take it. Then, so it's basically like Fast and Furious 6, yeah. 7. Who cares? Then they get double-crossed by the lady recruiting them in the first place, and then more action sequences. And at some point, because I saw the latest trailer, Ice Cube comes back yeah. as well. I didn't know he X came back. Xbox is their own. That's Something exactly like what that. he says. That's exactly what he says. I hope it's like, is it like a Billy Madison with, uh, what's his name? Oh, gosh, the guy that is the school shooter. Steve like Buscemi? He, Steve Buscemi, where he just like shows up and it's like, all right, and then leaves. No. Dang it. Okay. No. All right. It's a, and it's just a race against the clock and the enemy yeah. to try and. Well, stop I mean, like happening. once once they get they get because Donnie Yen and Vin are the one that ones that get to the the program, and they end up being best friends again, and then and then that's when the NSA lady or whatever turns on them, and it's like all right, kill all of the triple X people, sort of thing. That's when Ice Cube shows up when they're at the last the like threat of they're like ah oh, well this is it we're gonna die like go out guns blazing. And all of a sudden, Ice Cube shows up with a grenade launcher. And it's like, nice, saves the day. It ends off with. Uh, I don't four. want to know the ending. Okay. I don't want to know the ending. I just want to know the plot. That's it. All right. That's the plot. Give me Resident Evil. So picking up three weeks after the end of the fifth installment. <clears throat> right. Which three I don't even weeks. think we saw the fifth installment. I think I saw it. Did you? Oh, I just saw it. Right before I saw this movie, so there's uh, zombies in it, sort of. <laughs> there's zombies in all of them. Yeah. So picking up three weeks after the fifth installment, you find out that how the fifth movie ended with Wesker recruiting Claire and all the other survivors, and it was now them versus the Red Queen was only half true. Wesker turned on all of them and killed everyone except Alice. She was able to escape. So, however. You come to find out early on that it is actually Wesker versus the Red Queen, and you're not quite sure why. Mm-hmm. So Alice is still looking for answers, roaming the globe. She's then captured by this moving tank brigade, which you find out the leader of this moving tank brigade is Dr. Isaacs. Dr. Isaacs was the man <clears throat> from 2 and 3 who turned himself into Tyrant and was killed at the end of 3. And there's this great line where she's like, I killed you. And he's like, eh. she's like, I killed your clone. He's like, yeah. And it's like, great. <laughs> good. So we're it's all. It's good on- that we're at that point in the conversation where it's just like, I killed your clones. Yup. Nuts. 
Not a surprise. It's just, yeah. All right. Wow. So she escapes from Dr. Isaacs and comes across Raccoon City, where she was headed back towards anyway. That's where it all began. Yes. Because she's getting messages from the Red Queen basically saying, it is versus me versus Wesker, but I want to destroy the Umbrella Corporation. And you're the only person who can do it. And you're the only person who can do it is because you need to destroy from inside the hive, which is where the first movie took place and where the outbreak started. Mm. We come to find out Wesker is held up within the hive. And when she gets back to Raccoon City, we would then meet up again with Claire Reinfield, who we last saw in... Claire Redfield? Redfield, sorry, Redfield. So I just play the game, so I was... No, you're good. Uh, who we last saw on the Arcadia at the end of four, and she's like, yeah, they, they kidnapped me, I escaped, and I got my new little group together, and uh, we've been held up here ever since, and she's like, great, we're gonna... We have to go back into the hive, and we have to stop all this, because in two hours, all of humanity is going to be wiped out by the remaining virus. The remaining virus is going to kill out the rest of humanity within two hours. Which virus are they on now? There's still the T-virus. Still just T-virus. Okay. Yep. All this is still just All from reliable. the T-virus. Mm-hmm. So now there's it's a so race. There's so many viruses, Garrett. I know. So now there's a race against the clock. Two hours to stop the T-virus because if they fail, all of humanity is wiped out. Right. Shocking. It does, however, come to a legitimate close and does bring all six movies Full circle to an end. Don't talk about it. No, no, I won't. That's, I'm that's just... another question that I have. Okay. All right. All right. Excellent. I'm going to say plot-wise, I'd have to give that one to... I don't know yet. I'll think about it. <laughs> Suspense. <laughs> All right. Now, what group has the strongest supporting cast? I haven't even seen Resident Evil. I'm going to give it to Resident Evil. <laughs> <laughs> Triple X did not have the strongest supporting no. cast. No. The, yeah, these, these characters were Evil. were nothing but just shallow cliches. How dare you! And, and full of shitty one-liners, and it's there was no depth at all, or even okay. And Underworld Evil. guy has a cool coat. <sighs> okay, Underworld oh, is still got... trapped though, and maybe like Triple X, still trapped in thinking it is two thousand, and these dark, dank emo vampires are are really cool. But that's what the whole thing is. They can't change it. They, but yet I they, think, but yet they try because all their new recruits don't look like the adults. They look like modern day hipsters just dressed in black clothing, and you're like, "This doesn't fit." But is it sexy? No. no. Is Kate back and so sexy? Well, yes. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's another question. Don't worry about it. Okay. <laughs> okay. So it goes to. I didn't even get to choose that one. All right. So it goes to Resident Evil. Yes. Were people good? Yes, yeah, so I, I mean I like Wesker and I like the guy that plays him in these in these uh, movies. Yeah, when Wesker's good, Isaac's good. He's the guy who was like is Khaleesi. I'm your man servant from Game of Thrones or whatever. England. Him, yes. <laughs> I'm your man servant. He's not wrong. <laughs> yeah, I've watched very little, but that's what I can pick up. I guess that's fair. <laughs> so he, you know, the supporting cast is great. Ali Lighter's always good. Um, she knows what she is. Well, yeah, what she can do and. They're never uninteresting. They just don't get much screen time because everything's focused on Milia Djokovic. Yeah, so. sure. All right. Now going back to the leads. So which actor seems the least checked out? Is anybody doing this just for the cash and does it show? I, I don't want... Okay, I didn't see Triple X. So you have to... You're going to have to tell me if Vin is cashed out. But out of Beckinsale and Djokovic, I'm giving it to Beckinsale. Seems more into it or more cashed out? More cashed out. Okay. Man, I don't know. Just because, like, it was a lot of, again, it was just a lot of really, like, crappy one-liners. And just the way, I don't know if it's just because he's a bad actor or if it's just because he's cashed out. But, like, probably that first one. Because I remember, though, Vin Diesel being all about, like, yeah, on the set here. All right, let's talk to these people. Okay, at the red carpet. All right, let's see. Like, and if you're cashed out, are you having social updates every, like? I don't know. Ask Stephen Amell. He's not cashed out. <laughs> he's frustrated. He seems overly <laughs> confident. He's art- he's artistically frustrated. Yeah. All right. Um, so, I'll, yeah, I guess I guess get- Beckinsale is probably more cashed out then. All right. So Beckinsale gets a deduction. Jovovich still in it, probably because she's wrapping it up. Yeah. I mean, I, she seems. Th- I just watched all six, and I can tell you that I have not seen like a fluctuation in the character of being like cashing it in. Okay. 
All right, all right. Let's see. What movie suffers the most from escalation in terms of, oh, you know what I mean. Like, oh, well, we'd, vampires are boring now, so now we have to have ghost vampires that can also shoot their fangs out of their mouths like little bullets or <laughs> things that kind of get a little <laughs> over, the t- <laughs> over the top like that. <laughs> The end of Underworld. Where just okay, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Damn it! So we I don't think t- this counts because you guys just both saw that. No, no we, we did. We did <laughs> want to talk to you about this, but then you're like, "I'm gonna go see it." So now we can't talk about it because you missed it. They have bullet fangs. No, <laughs> damn it! But there's a scene where the head Uber van, the head, no, the head like the, Lo- the Lost Franco brother, the Lost Franco brother, and like the head liking guy who's turned himself into a mega version of Scott Speedsman's character from the first film, are. Going at each other with so he's mega liking yes yeah with dual Uzis in yeah. each hand and they're firing at each other and just missing. I'd like to point out that missing each other. I'd like to point out that the 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 head lichen had like the the light bullets. Yeah, and you yet bullets? for some reason, Lost Franco brother was just impervious to that. Question. Was he shooting the gun in lichen form? No. Damn it. No. So they're in normal. <laughs> so that's escalation. Form, and they're just like. Firing at each other and missing, and finally they get as close as me to you, like across this table, and they're still just rapid firing at each other, and they're hitting each other and missing each other, and nothing's happening. And then they just drop the guns, they're like, guess we're gonna have to settle this with our fists. No, 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 no. There's a, there's a brief scene where they they throw down guns and stare at each other, and then all the bullets just like, oh yeah, pop out. Oh, of they them all push over. them out of each yeah. other. Yeah, they're out of themselves. It's it's pretty ridiculous. <laughs> that being said. Um, yeah, is there escalation in triple? There, I mean, there's escal- tough to escalate there's- from an already ex- literally extreme movie. Yeah, so I'll, I'll at least say this with with Resident Evil, the, the the way they try and sum it all up is with the escalation of confusion. Clones play a huge, huge part in, in this story, oh, clone, and Clone Wars. It is escalated clone a saga. lot. Oh, a see, lot, that's lot. bad. That's bad news, bears. Good thing they're done with it, though, right? Yeah. Okay. Is it something to do with like clones being able to repopulate the world, or do we want to spoil it and me to tell you the ending? Not yet. Okay. Not yet. Special effects slash production value. Which movie seemed to be top tier? Underworld. Uh, the two I saw. Underworld had better special effects. Underworld had better special effects than Resident Evil. Because they're on a, a smaller scale, like her disappearing as a ghost thing or just the like and change or something like that to where now Resident Evil has like flying dragons chasing down people. Yeah, and they look like big umbrella symbols. They look like giant dragons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was it. All right, so triple X though. How were the explosions? I mean, the explosions, the pyrotechnics and all that looked good. Donnie Yen's always awesome whenever he's doing kung fu shit. Um, that, the the final scene, and it's in the trailer, and it looked bad in the trailer, too, where he's, like, trying to run out of the plane. And it's just, like, <laughs> the final scene. <laughs> and it's just, like, clearly, like, this was done really bad. There's, that was really bad. There's there's a scene where, like, he's chasing down Donnie Yen on, motor, on dirt bikes, and all of a sudden they, like, go off a ramp, and they press a lever on the dirt bike and it turns into like a jet ski dirt bike and then they go out into the sea and it's like it's just really bad green okay. screening that so was... I, w- I would definitely give it to underworld they, they did better on that okay so. so then those were the three as i had three really moments from the trailers and that was mine for under for uh triple x so they're able to go underwater i'm fine with the idea of motorcycles being able to ride on top of the waves if you've got enough you know, momentum yeah. and whatever. But then there's a point where it seems like Vin Diesel has gone underwater with his motorcycle yep. and his f- and his butterfly kicking. And then he comes back up and, and continues it keeps to going. Ride. See, that's not how that works. <laughs> your mo- they explain your, your motor how that? Would, no. Your motor would have sputtered out and died. <laughs> okay. So they don't make any explanation for that. My question for Underworld is, why can she turn invisible now? Do Could- you want us to actually tell you? Because they will ruin stuff in the movie. Yes. She dies and is brought back to life. Okay. And through these regenerative healing powers, she's taught how to do this from the Northern Covenant, which is all the white vampires. 
how to be invisible pretty it's, much well because it's that to them it's like you know they they take like sojourns to the other side and Neat. so it's like that's how they're able to have these kind of more fantastic who kills powers. her uh the, the, the head, head lichen. lichen oh you stab her mm-hmm. you shoot her a lot both yep probably it's, it's probably both, it's both. <laughs> I don't remember that far back. I remember it's, her dying on ice on her knees, but I can't remember how she yeah, got Yeah, like, she, she gets stabbed and shot, and, like... And so, going to the other side gives you cool white streaks in your hair? No, well, yes. But, like, <laughs> through through the, the Northern Coven, Coven's process, mm. that's how you get... Okay. And then, for Resident Evil, it was plain and simple. She said for, I think, the 18th time in these movies, we're going to end this. They do, in fact, end this. Yeah, by the end, the T virus is. They, they leave nothing, no potential. Maybe, maybe. They leave as much potential as Arkham City had at the end of Arkham, where it's like the story is done, but I can still roam around and beat up bad guys. Okay. So it's that. Like the main story is done, but it's like. There's still a lot of zombies out there. Yeah. Okay. All right. And then finally. Which movies wrapped everything up in a tight little bow, and which movies led for potential continuations of these continuations? Sounds like we've got it pretty much wrapped up nice and pretty for Resident Evil. How about Triple X? Did not at all. Did it tease for anything in the future? Oh, it the it. <clears throat> Did they introduce a popular actor as a potential villain for the next movie? No, but they. They pretty much set it up where it's like, hey, this is still going. <laughs> you thought you were done with Triple X? Joke's on you. So Vin Diesel's on board, as is Donnie Yen. Yeah. Because they're best friends? I guess so. Okay. And then... But it, 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 it ends up, it's like, it's almost like a team of like 10 people. And I think... 10 we, Triple Xs? It's like, eight, it's like somewhere between game. 8 to 10. But it's like... <laughs> nice. It is. But, <laughs> but it's like, I think we joked about this on, on air one time, or it might have been me talking to somebody else, but like, would you, would you put it past them to be like, oh, Vin Diesel's character from Triple X is related to Dom Toretto, and it's just going to be franchises batting heads together? No, that's impossible. Twin no brothers separated at birth, man. Oh. I would buy it. Yeah, okay, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and then And then they could end that's how they could end that saga. Fast and Furious ten. Fast and Furious it's, X. Should have should have died. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh and then finally Underworld. Wrap it up or did it leave you? No, it, it left it left the story open oh, as usual because I think decision. now she's like, I need to know where my daughter's at. And not only that, like there's still lichens around. There, there's still lichens, and her and the lost Franco brother are now both the elders of the covenant. The coven. Mm-hmm. The coven. Yeah. Do they ever address Michael? What happened to Michael? Yes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They do. What happened to him? So he was dot. He 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 was kidnapped by this head lichen, skinned alive, and that's how we've gotten the super lichen guy. Because he's been slowly using his blood and body parts to make himself into this super monster. Oh, and so at Michael's the end, he dead. even says, mm-hmm. "Yep." And at the end, he's like, "This is the last of his blood," and it is. And he drinks it, but there's like one drop left, and she gets a hold of it so she can see the memories and everything else. Oh, that's nice. Yes, because he disappeared after like the second <clears throat> movie. Yeah, she's like, "I'm out. I'm not doing this anymore. <laughs> this is insane." Okay, can I? Opt out of seeing all three of these movies and go see The Founder instead. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to do that. (laughs) All right. Thanks, guys. You're welcome. Let's see. I've been working on my addiction. So, um, let's give this a shot. Three Wise... No, 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 no. Three Wise Radio. As usual, we end every episode with what's piquing our interest, where we just say what's piquing our interest. Garrett, what's piquing your interest this week? We've got two little, like, point fives this week. That um, together make a whole. Exactly. Um, my first one is that uh, I finally started watching The Get Down. It's great. Oh, is it's it? Great. Okay. It's really great. It's a continuation of that. Watch that alongside with uh, 
Hip Hop Evolution, which is a documentary series on Netflix. It's like a six episode series, mm-hmm. and it just it talks about the birth of hip hop and what's kind of what. It, it, and it's the same story essentially, just in documentary form. But it's really great. Both of them are so far. Um, my other point five was that I've continued playing Final Fantasy fifteen. It's just it's it's growing on me. Yep. I'm, I'm really enjoying it. So. Okay. Right on. Sam, what's speaking your interest? Uh, there was a story that came out about Tom Hardy's Splinter Cell movie, which I forgot was still a thing. Oh, yeah. It was going to be happening, just because we've been talking about the video, one of the video game movies. Uh, and the big thing that they said is that this really isn't like a video game movie. It's less like a video game movie and more like a Tom Hardy movie. I don't know what that means. It's weird. Has there been any other Tom I, Hardy I was hoping movies? you were going to finish that. It's less like a video game movie and more like a Tom Clancy movie. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's, but what, that's what, what does that Has, mean? Wait, is that what you meant, really? No, oh, no. Okay. It's like it's more of a Tom Hardy movie. So what does that mean? He's going to have a funny voice. He doesn't have a... Yeah. And he's going to be a little psycho. But that's not what that is. I don't know. That just bothered me. Was Splinter Cell... Because that is a Tom Clancy thing, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah was that a book? Splinter Cell. Uh, I don't remember if it was a book or not. Because isn't Tom Clancy a writer? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I don't think it was a book. Did he just write the video game? Or why is it called Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell then? I mean, I I think he had some form of okay. hand in the writing, but... Maybe it isn't a Tom Clancy. I'm pretty sure no, it is. No, Splinter Cell is for sure Tom Clancy. I just don't remember if he, was, if he wrote a book about it or if he just helped write the game. Okay. I always wondered that. Just one Let's of those things. Let's find out, Sam says Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell is a series of award-winning video games. Okay, so then, yeah, he... We'll say he had a hand in the games. I, I would hope so. <laughs> or he is... I mean, they're cool games, and it makes sense. You just have to have a secret agent, like, guy. They just also talk Do they about all it. follow the same person, or is they... Yeah, yeah Sam okay. Fisher. Uh, oh, it a, is a book. That's an everyman name. Oh, it, it is, is a, a book. book, too. Cool. All right. Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell Barracuda. <laughs> Ooh. Barracuda. None of these written by Tom Clancy. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Tom <laughs> Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell, written in 2007 by Tom Clancy. Okay. Tom Clancy Splinter Cell. What? Aftermath, written by Peter Teller. Tom Clancy Splinter Cell, David Mitchum. Tom Clancy Splinter Cell. What? Did he write any of these? Did you just say he wrote the first one? Yeah, but like afterward. Yeah. No. <laughs> like, why is he such a big deal? It's because like, it's, it's characters. It's, it's my it's, character. Yeah. That makes. That makes I mean, sense. we still say it in every film. Whoever as Ian Fleming's 007. I mean, shit on Triple yeah, X. Yeah, but the name on, of the movie isn't. Is Triple X a Ian book? Fleming's James Bond? They originally were in the like with the Connery and Moore era. It's Ian Fleming's Doctor No, Ian Fleming's For Your Eyes Only. Was Triple X a book at any point? I don't think so. Didn't think so either. But at the beginning of this movie, it's like Tom Clancy. No, it's like it's like based on the characters written by whoever I guess wrote the first movie or whatever. Yeah. Oh, the Fast and Furious movies do that too. And it's like I don't get why. I guess because it's different directors, so it's like oh, you can't take credit for my characters. I made these characters. Oh, man. Royalties. Royalty rights, bro. It looks like he only wrote the first one. But we didn't do that in... Because who did the original Alien? What's that? Who directed the original Alien? Oh, um... Fuck. Uh, I'm totally blanking right now. Uh, oh, no. You gotta be kidding me. Go to the movie poster. <laughs> no, it's... No! <laughs> what say? No, I know who directed this movie. Do you? Yes! <laughs> Ridley Scott. It's fucking Ridley Scott. I know who directed Alien. It's Ridley Scott. Oh, that was... I know we're getting way off here, but Joe, instead say. of your peaking interest, you talk about James Cameron. You didn't mention that. James Cameron talking about... He was talking about the next Alien movie that's coming out. He's like, I think Aliens really run its course. So you're making five fucking movies. Four of them at the same time. Four of them at the same time. And it's like, oh, you know, I'll still see it because Ridley Scott's a genius, but I think there's really, we've told our story there. No! Fuck you, that's the one actually, not not you, like James Cameron, fuck him, that's the one I was getting, that's what I was getting at. In his Aliens movie, it didn't say, like, based on the characters created by Ridley Scott. I, 
I don't know. And how are you going to talk shit on a franchise that helped made you who you were? In his defense, who was he a lot of these aliens? movies have been quite bad. Mm-hmm. True. AVP is great. Mm-hmm. Directed by? Ridley Scott. Paul W.S. Anderson. See? He knows what he's doing. He does know what he's doing. <clears throat> What's uh, piquing my interest this week is in the comic book world, I enjoyed the first run of Batman 66. At least for a while, they were like little episodes of yeah, the cute. television series, and they would take liberties of like introducing Arkham for the first time if you would have saw it in '66 or Bane or something like that. However, now we're getting a crossover for Batman '66, which is the crossover I really would like to see. Batman '66 meets Wonder Woman '77, so it's Adam West's Batman meets Linda Carter's Wonder Woman. And they say that the comic does fall more on the Batman 66 side than the Wonder Woman 77 side. But that's like that. I I want to see more comic books like this, like take superhero products throughout the ages. And just dick around with them. Yeah, and just cross over with them. Have some fun with them. Mm-hmm. Well, here you go. You can get it. Yeah, I might pick it up. Yeah? Yeah. I bet you nickel you don't. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like I'm gonna lose money in winning Sounds this like a bet. challenge. You either lose a nickel or you lose three dollars. <laughs> Two ninety five. Thank you. Where's that nickel going? Towards a coke. I there don't you know. go. I can't buy anything with a nickel anymore. If you want to, you can buy anything. anything with if you want to pay us a nickel, there's many different ways you can do so. You can email <laughs> us. It, at, put it in an envelope. <laughs> <laughs> you can email us at threewiseradio at gmail.com. Do we can get in a lot of trouble. <laughs> yeah, we can. Uh, you can find us on Instagram at Threewise Radio, on Twitter at Threewise Radio, or hashtag Threewise Radio, and on Facebook at Threewise Media. Our sister podcast is Movie Versus. Any chance they're seeing any of these horrible movies coming up? No. Lucky Maybe. Them. Lucky them. <laughs> I'm glad we were able to cover it then for them. Uh, join us next week when we head into February and figure out a topic for then. Next week on Three Wise Radio. Three Wise Radio is a production of Three Wise Media. For more information, check us out on Facebook. 